coming out, guys. This is gorgeous. Free running, Vomar. Today's the day. Of course, like every year at Vomar, we get hit with some freakish last minute snowstorm. But luckily, it is sunny out right now and it's just getting above 32. And then tomorrow, we're going to have high of 48. So the only issue there is going to be just slop. It's going to be slop conditions with soft mud, which is going to be a watt burner. Okay, he's on my butt all the time. I'm a trail breaking Picasso. I was gonna say, Picasso used a, a, a brush and a canvas, and we used rovers and snow. <laughs> went incredibly well. In fact, I think it went too well because what we have now, the Pave sectors are actually better roads than the main roads, than the maintained roads. I'm just worried about it's going to be warm, 47 degrees, on top of snow that came in last night. We were talking about sloppy, sloppy. So it's going to be mountain bikes, fat bikes, and then probably gravel bikes third. I know that sounds crazy, but that's Momar. against the sag stop and Ted and Kevin are gonna stop for about 10 seconds which is cool they've been they've been lighting up the front group to the point where now the next chaser is probably more than a minute back but we're only 17 miles in these guys are killing it killing it that's Let's hot tea the yeah. sweet hot that's tea hot. Just maple syrup, please. Water. Yeah. Kevin, it. <laughs> sag. This is great. Thank you guys. Oh, once it hits your lips, I mean, so good. <laughs> this is fantastic. Kim, what is this? Kim Ballers, extravaganza. Peanut butter, banana, bacon, maple syrup. Grilled. Grilled. Of course. Why not? Alright, let's go. So freaking awesome. The guys are partying down at the SAG stop after hammering so incredibly hard. How do you think the whole nav thing is going? So far so good with the front group, but most of the front group they have expensive garments and that's, you know, pretty foolproof because you have a graphic display, but I am worried about there was a, there was quite a, quite a few people who didn't have the ride with GPS dialed at registration. Luckily, we've got tire tracks. We've got muddy conditions today, so there's tire tracks everywhere, so it makes it very, very difficult to not know where the group went, but we'll wait and see. I can tell you this, I will never go back to using signs. I will never do it. There's so much far less impact on the roads. There's no the sign pollution. There's camaraderie. That front group, we can hear them talking to each other before, like before the turns, we can hear them waving. 
and, and, and working together, and that's what we want. We want, we want people grouping together and, and, and enjoying the shared adventure experience. That's what it's all about. Pave Sector 3, definitely our most technical. It's got this little rock wall. You're gonna see Mike Barton come down in just a second. We had Noah from Bicycle Express who just went by in third. Ted and Kevin, Ted King and Kevin Bouchard Hall just dialed down on their mountain bikes. I mean, these guys are riding it as if it's not even, it doesn't even have snow on it. It's, it's just amazing and this is so difficult. We pre-rode this last week and it was just, you're all over the bike just trying to stay on it. But this is, this is what it's all about. So. Class four roads almost always have two stone walls on either side because the early settlers pulled those stones out of the pastures so they can raise sheep and, and, and grow crops. They piled them in the roadways and then the roads were eventually taken over maintenance. Here comes Mike Barton, killing it. Mike, never say die Barton. Awesome, Mike, you're a minute down. Minute down the leader. Kill it, dude. So, and then you have these trees, and those are all maple trees. So the, the lines that you see are actually the modern way of, of collecting sap. They will tap into the lines in the trees using these, uh, using these plastic lines, and that leads all into a huge container at the bottom of the hill. But in the old days, they kept all these ancient maple trees because they were clearing the fields. They had to get rid of them there, but they kept these guys for sugaring. And this is just a classic, classic Vermont scene especially during mud season and maple maple season you've got the old roadway you've got the maple lines now you used to be able to see buckets which are actually beautiful and some places still have the maple buckets for for tapping um but this is what a corridor would be and this dates from like the early 1800s and so what happens is over this would have been a main thoroughfare back then for horse and carriage but it fell into it fell into basically disuse but it's it, a quirky thing about vermont law is that these roads never go away legally so people may not need them the town doesn't want to maintain them but they still mean they still remain a public right away This is like, I think this is the sixth Bomar, and it was a by far our most successful. It was also the one that I was the most dreading because it was, we had horrible weather conditions, really. We were, we were like I've been saying, it was body blows. We got a nor'easter on Friday that just delivered a bunch of slush and ice, and then we had temperatures in the teens last night that took that snow and froze it, and then by the afternoon, we had peanut butter baby shit on the road, and it was like, it was everything, but people had the best time. It was incredible. Escutney Outdoors has this amazing building, the Outdoor Center, which just would work like a godsend. And then we had, the staff was right on, we had people parking, we had no lines at the Porta Johns, and these are all the things that promoters look at, no lines at registration. But most of all, we had an unbelievable vibe. We went against traffic at the end, we we're taking pictures of the riders, and it was nothing but thumbs up, and people were just loving it. And this is why we do it. You know, we do it for that. People just love to be part of this tribe. I actually had a guy who got a divorce last October. He was he was devastated and he didn't even know what he was gonna do. And somebody said, get a gravel bike. He was, he was already into biking a little bit. He got a gravel bike, trained a bit over the winter. This was his first event of the gravel season. And he said, it was everything people said it was gonna be. I feel like I'm a member of this family. And man, that's what it's all about. It was great.